morning. Step into the office. Good morning, good afternoon, good night. Welcome back to Pedro Dura de Santiago. I give you daily vlogs, but multi, most of you know that. So before we get into the survey results that were sent to me that I saw, um, let's get into some really, really fun news. So 10K, 10K subs. We're gonna do a massive giveaway. I wanna talk about that right now. And then we'll get into the survey results and we'll do some pickups and drop-offs. Today's Friday. It's 10.45. I'm running a little bit late, but I want to get this information to you guys. We're going to hit 10K subs. We are going to hit 10K subs on this channel pretty soon. I want to do a really good giveaway for you guys. For my subs that have been extremely loyal and helpful to this community, it's really humbling. And I've a lot of you guys that know me have known what that's meant to me. I thought we'd get to 1K subs. We did that. I did a giveaway for 1K. And I gave away half my earnings for one particular day to a young man named Anthony. It was really fun to do that. <laughs> this is what we're going to do for 10K. So the week that I hit 10K, the following week, I'm going to give five winners half my earnings for that week. This is what I mean by that. So typical week for me, I make $1,000. That's my goal. So what that means is I'm going to pick five people. And they're each going to get a hundred bucks. That's what we're going to do. It's my way of saying thank you for watching, subscribing, commenting, helping this community. It's my way of saying thanks. I'm humbled. I'm honored to be a part of this community, to help people, whether it's me helping you with tips and tricks, if you're new, like a lot of you say, or just entertaining or giving you something you can relate to. Either way, I, I like it. I love it. So I wanted to figure out what can I do to give back? That's what we're going to do. All you have to do to be eligible to win is this. So in this video right now, today, put a comment down below. Be a subscriber to the channel, hit the red button. Put a comment in this video, any comment. Comment related to something you saw today, comment about whatever you'd like to comment about, okay? And you will be entered in to be one of the five winners we're gonna pick. So, it's as simple as that. Easy way to make a hundred bucks for yourself, for whatever you wanna do with that money. Okay, uh, I'm excited to do this thing. It's going to be fun. Plus, when we hit 10K, we'll be doing merchandise on this channel. I've been talking about that for a while. I got designs already. When we hit 10K, it kind of unlocks that capability to do that. I'll be giving away a lot of shirts. And then also you can purchase some as well if you want to support the channel. So those five winners will get half my earnings for the week, split up between the five, five of you guys. And you're going to get a free, free shirt of your choice. And we're going to have four designs. They're going to be really good, really good shirts. So... That's what I want to talk about as far as the giveaway goes. Let's get into this survey stuff. All right, so DoorDash sends out surveys to read emails. We've talked about it on this channel a couple times. And for the most part, I think I've taken most of them that I can remember. And because, um, you know, you're, if you got an opinion you want to be heard, it's, maybe that's how you can do it. I don't know. Who knows if it makes a difference or not. But so on there, like pretty much, I guess their website or something, there's a lot of, they, they reported on this a few days ago couple weeks ago and uh, they also report about like them being sued and like they respond to certain things media require inquiries I, I challenge you guys to look at look it up and um, the survey results I'm gonna read I'm gonna grab the laptop we're gonna read some of these pinpoints out loud it's not a very long article or anything like that so it won't take long but did you guys take the survey what do you think about it do you think they do anything with this information do you think it's just data collecting for profit shares and news outlets what do you what do you think I don't know. I, I don't know yet, if I'm being honest. What's your guys' opinion? Put them down below. But um, let's get into that. And uh, we're pulling up a Chick-fil-A right now. We're going to 1375, and it was seven miles. I said, yeah, I'm going to take it. Mostly highway miles, actually. Drop-off leaves me in a good zone. I was like, yep, I'm not afraid of the miles if th those other things meet, you know, for me, the requirements for me. So uh, let we'll, we'll read this in a moment here. And uh, have you guys seen it? I don't know. It was brought to my attention by... Um, a gentleman named Elijah. He works with the Rideshare guy. He's a correspondent or whatever for the Rideshare guy. He has a channel. You can look him up. The Rideshare guy. And uh, I'm going to be doing a little... I'm going to be helping him out on their channel with, with this survey stuff as well, giving my opinion. But I wanted to give it to you guys as well first before I do that to get your guys' thoughts and then just let you know what they, what they said. Now that we have teleported back to the home base office, let's read some of this. I'll put some, try to put some split screens here. So this is a the article um, from doordashnews.com. Um, Understanding Dasher's the results of our national Dasher survey, okay? 
So over the last quarter, DoorDash has continued working hard to respond to changes in communities across the globe, helping to uplift local economies through our commitments to dashers, merchants, and customers. In particular, we're proud. We are proud that so many people continue to, to come to our platform for flexible, easy, accessible, and immediate earnings they can find in they can't find in traditional, more structured work. Just last quarter, from April to June this is of this year, over three million people dashed. Three million, including more first-time dashers than in any previous quarter. So what that means, last year we they told us two million more people are coming on the platform. Okay, to better understand our dash community, including what brings them to our platform, what they find valuable, and what public policy solutions would support their goals, we recently completed a survey of dashers across the U.S. It was the most robust survey we've ever completed, and the results are clear. People come to DoorDash because they value the flexibility. I would agree with that. The accessible earnings opportunity and because other types of work simply don't fit the needs of their lives at, at this particular time. Makes sense. While the results show a number of clear, uh, number of clear trend, li trend lines in what attracts people to Dash, and they also underscore what we have long felt to be true, referring to Dashers as gig workers, misrepresents who they really are. In fact, the survey shows that only 15% of Dashers work exclusively with app-based platforms. So that means only 15% are full-time, that's all we do. Earning on their own terms as their own bosses. Of those 15%, over half are dashing while they look for other work. In contrast, 85% of dashers have other primary occupations or life commitments. That's important. Dashers are delivering fewer than four hours a week on average. And 90% of dashers deliver fewer than 10 hours a week. We've talked about this before, right? Which means they're, they're not a gig economy worker and more a parent an entrepreneur, a student, a teacher, a retiree, and more in short, the vast majority of dashers are earning independently with DoorDash while fitting this work into their careers and life, not the other way around. That makes sense. What flexibility really means. DoorDash and platforms like it often talk about how dashers value the flexibility this work offers. It's because we hear it a lot, but those work, but there's work to do in ensuring everyone else understands what we mean. Flexibility starts long before any dasher accepts their first delivery. We believe the majority of U.S. adults would qualify to be dashers if they were to sign up. Those who want to dash and meet our screening requirements are typically eligible to begin dashing the same day they sign up. That's interesting. This allows millions of people to start earning whenever they want, stop earning whenever they want, and repeat the cycle as they choose. This accessibility and flexibility bears out in the survey results. 78% of dashers say the ability to create their own schedule is one of the main reasons they partner with DoorDash. I agree with that. 76 say it's because they, they're able to work as much or as little as they want. I would agree with that as well. We also see flexibility in the variability in how dashers choose to work. For example, among dashers who dashed on a Monday in April through June of this year, roughly half dashed the subsequent Monday and less than 20% dashed each of the next four Mondays. The pattern is similar for all days of the week. This shows that most dashers aren't using a platform like a, like a traditional job with set shifts handed out in advance by their employer. Dashers are using a platform when and how they want. The reason dashers have this flexibility when working with DoorDash is because they are independent contractors. They're paid for each delivery they complete, and when they're not delivering an order, they can fill their time any way they wish by working a full-time job, running errands, caring for loved ones, earning on another platform, or just relaxing. This flexibility to craft their own schedule without permission needed from a boss explains why the survey found that 90% of dashers want to remain independent contractors. Knowing this further underscores the importance of our work to find portable, Proportional, proportional and flexible frameworks that let dashers keep their flexibility, but also gain access to important benefits and protections. Income earned with DoorDash is filling gaps, especially for those who have lost income elsewhere. We recently share that nationally, dashers earn over $25 per hour they're delivering. That seems high nationally, but I guess it's average. 
helping dashers earn income when they need it. We know being able to earn immediately and at the touch of a button has always been important. But this, assess but this accessibility took on a new value during the pandemic when unemployment skyrocketed and many were looking for ways to earn while seeking new opportunities or caring for loved ones. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, in May 2020, so last May, nearly 50 million people reported that they had been unable to work at some point in the last four weeks. That was right at the height of the pandemic when things started to close down. Um, because their employer closed or lost business due to the pandemic and only 18% of them received some pay from their employer for the hours not worked. This left millions of people in need of income quickly and we are proud to have provided an opportunity for them to find that. I agree with that. I, I will say that that's, that's, been, that's been important. Our recent survey findings expand on the value of Dasher earnings. 68% of Dashers use DoorDash to make up for lost hours slash reduced income at work. And that number jumps to 75% among those making less than 50,000 per year, showing the particular value of our platform for those who may need it most. 71% of Dashers deliver more during certain times of the month to meet financial goals, like paying off bills, caring for family, buying gifts, and saving for big purchases. Meaning probably towards the end of the month, more, more of the part-timers are gonna dash then to pay rent and bills. 52% of dashers dash to avoid applying for government benefits, including 59% of caretakers, 57 of dashers of color, and 57 of veterans and their families. The government programs dashers reported avoiding because they were, were able to earn through DoorDash were SNAP, COVID-19 unemployment, and unemployment insurance. In addition to providing an opportunity for dashers to put money in their pockets, we work hard on products and partnerships to help dashers save on expenses. This quarter, we added a partnership with GoodRx to our slate of dasher perks and partnerships to help dashers access discounts on prescriptions and telehealth services. In addition, because we hear it from dash dashers all the time and know immediate access to income is critical, we rolled out instant pay through dasher direct, enabling dashers to immediately cash out their earnings after each dash multiple times a day, making it faster and easier to earn. So for those of you that don't know, you can sign up for that and not have to wait one week to get paid. Rideshare and traditional employment often don't work for Dasher lives. The results of the survey further emphasize that the vast majority of Dashers aren't the same people you'll see on the rideshare platforms. 96% of Dashers don't currently drive with rideshare platforms, meaning like Uber and Lyft. 82% of Dashers have never done so and have no plans to try it. I feel like that's a shot at Uber. When asked why, 72% of Dashers cite not wanting to share their vehicle, 57 cite safety as the reason, while others say they believe that dashing is more flexible than driving with rideshare. Interesting. What's more, while many industries have struggled to meet their labor needs, Uber and Rideshare and Lyft have met, definitely struggled. There's a shortage for Rideshare. As the economy reopens, the highly flexible, low, low barrier to entry, high earning opportunities available on DoorDash are extremely compelling and filling a need Dashers aren't finding elsewhere. That may explain why 27% of Dashers say that they simply would not work if platforms like DoorDash weren't an option. In all, these findings shed new light on the role DoorDash is playing in the lives of millions of people across the U.S. As we look ahead, we are focused on continuing to double down on ways we can support Dashers, as well as merchants and customers by growing opportunities and access across DoorDash communities. Let's chat. So in the description, I will put a link to this article. It was sent to me, like I said earlier, by Elijah, and he's a companion of the Rideshare guy. And I'm going to be working with him on my thoughts on this piece. Um, what do you guys think? Have you read this before? Is this new to you? Are you just not finding out through this channel? Um, I think they made some good points. I think DoorDash, the number one thing I think DoorDash did and their rise to popularity or inf or infamacy is was through the pandemic. And a lot, a lot of people that were out of work, lost a job, didn't want to go on assistance, did but still worked, whatever reason, they were able to make ends meet. And I think that's, I think that's a good thing, right? I think it's a really good thing. I did it. I got furloughed from the casino and said, okay, uh, what do I got to do? Okay, I can do ride share. I can do this. I can do that. I'm going to still make money. And then bam, now I have a YouTube channel. I'm part of this great community. I've met a lot of great people. So I am very grateful in that sense. Um, I do think DoorDash took a couple little slight little jabs at the Uber, ride share, and Lyft saying, hey, our platform's better. 
people are telling us they don't want to have people in their car come to come to DoorDash. It's better, more flexibility. Um, my question to you is, did you take the survey? Did you know about the survey? Will you take surveys in the, in the future? Um, have you taken them in the past? Um, I think press releases like this are very common for big companies. They have to do them. I think they made some good points. I want to, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section, okay? Also, don't forget, if you're commenting, you're entered into the 10K subscribers giveaway where I'll be giving five people up to $100 or more. Um, half my earnings for that week that we hit that 10k. You guys are fantastic. I appreciate you coming on this journey as we learn a little bit and you saw a couple little drop offs I think earlier. Um, it's been it it's been it's been a really good week for me and uh, I'm glad I could share this information with you guys. But I like to know your guys' opinion on it. Give me all the raw. Give me the real. Do you think this is a fluff piece? Fluff piece? Do you think this is a do you think those numbers are accurate? How do you fit into those percentages? Let me know in the comments below. You guys are fantastic. Bet on you, set goals one day time. See you guys tomorrow. I know I said bye, but there's more. Don't leave yet. Before we do that, we could do a little pickup action from Chick-fil-A. Picked up an order from Snarks right there. Going to High Point right here. $14 stack payoff. Two miles. Super easy. No! We'll be waiting, boys. We'll be waiting. How about that view, y'all? Truck, truck. Arch, arch. Trucks, arch, vans. Put the arch. Look at that. Some buildings. Got a stacked order, 11 bucks, one mile. Let's go. Yeah. Heather, we back. Deja vu, we just did this order, literally 30 minutes ago. Let's go. get paid to do that to charge him up i respect the hustle brother get your money oh, i hate delivering to the police headquarters it always takes forever they're never ready it always says hand to me <laughs> yes sir let's see how long it wait it is Thank you. All right, real quick lunch breakdown. We've been out for two hours and 40 minutes. We're at $81. Say that's pretty good. Say that's pretty good. And I decline a lot. Don't have to be a top dasher to get good orders, guys. Now, I do have a disclaimer. I did do two Uber Eats. You guys know my Malta app. You got a Malta app. And those netted me uh, $24. So you got to have multiple apps. It fills in the gaps. And then also when you see like a 225 Chick-fil-A order or something like that from DoorDash, but then right behind it is an $11.36 like I had earlier that turns into 14 bucks. Uber Eats, you jump on that. Multi-app, multi-app, multi-app. Multi -app. Top Dash are not needed here. Now for you Top Dashers out there that hustle and grind really hard and take the trash orders the last week so you can keep Top Dash for the next month. If it works for you and you're making the money you want to make, continue to do that. Never going to tell somebody how to run their business, but you got to understand we are enabling the non-tippers and we're letting DoorDash know we will go six miles for $3. That's the only issue I have with it. But if you're making money and you're meeting your goals, it is what it is. Do what you do. If you want to be able to schedule your dash and you got to be top dash in your market to do it, hey, that's fine. Maybe I might think differently if I had to schedule. I get it. I'm not sliding. But I'm just saying, for people that tell me, why don't you try being a top dasher, stop complaining about the low ball orders, I still make what I need to make. Got an Uber Eats to a McDonald's that is very hit or miss for me. But usually the lobby's open, I get here, it's not. On the app it says pick up in store. No. These merchants have got to update their information, man. You can't be... Uh, it makes me want to unassign. I hate waiting in lines. 
I'm super impatient. And this is only seven bucks, but it was going like 1.2 miles. But I, waiting, waiting is the worst thing you could do as a dasher, I think. Or I might be on a dash, I'm on Uber Eats. It's the worst thing you could do. It, it just kills your profitability within that hour. So that's why sometimes you gotta be able to unassign and not feel bad about it. That's my opinion. I'm gonna keep this one. It's the last one I'm gonna do for lunch. And it's gonna put me at a great, great amount. I've only, and I wind up working three hours. But man, the lines will just kill your profitability, your monies per hour. Really bad. Horrible decision, Pedro. I should have just not made this seven bucks and took my behind home for lunch. I might be the most impatient YouTube vlogger, geek tuber. I probably am. It's all right. Yes, we have arrived. Yes, sir. Finally. Little shoe action for you guys. We done.